All right. Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about square knots and how to make them. Um, and so the idea behind this is, uh, and a lot of times in med school, we're taught how to do square knots, but I often feel it's rushed and that they don't do it in a standardized manner. And so what we're going to try to do is kind of solve those two um, issues and see if we can help you learn how to do square knots. Okay? So um, the way we're going to structure this, we're first going to talk about a little bit about the theory of knots and what we're trying to do, because I think that's something that's often missing. Um, the second thing, we're actually going to talk about mechanics of making a square knot. And the last thing we're going to do is uh, help you troubleshoot some of the common issues that you run into for square knots. Alright, so let's talk about square knots. What exactly is a square knot? Um, and so basically, a square knot is you're making a bunch of throws. And so this is a throw, which is basically a loop right here. Alright, and a square knot. Um, is when you do two of these throws, uh, you'll see a pattern. And notice how it kind of looks like a square, right? And so I want to point out something about this uh, pattern right here. Um, so notice that this part of the rope, it goes over this part and this part of the string. And notice that this part of the string goes underneath this part and this part. And so that's a sign of a good square knot. Right? And that's something, again, that we can show you over here on the picture. So a good square knot, notice that um, on the right side, both of the strings of the brown string are underneath the red string, and both of them are underneath the red strings over here. So again, those are characteristics you look for in a square knot. And why that's important is because a square knot gives you the greatest strength. So if you don't do a square knot, and if you do some other knot, like a crane knot, which we'll talk about later on, it's not as strong, all right? So I'm gonna put down this knot just to show you what a square knot looks like um, after you've done it. So you can see there's the two ropes that comes out together, and then there's the two parts of the string and it goes in together. So a square knot should look like this, okay? And so that's your, I guess, your basic foundation for a square knot. When you're asked to do a square knot in the OR, um, it's going to be probably, you know, four to six throws, depending on what your attending wants you to do. And so it will look something like this. Uh, this is essentially what you're doing. You're making one, two, three, four loops, and then each loop you're kind of crossing the string across. And each of these are, again, that's about that's a square knot, that's a square knot, that's a square knot. Okay. okay. And so a couple of important things that I want you to keep in mind uh, before we go forward. So when you're doing knots uh, for a square knot, so you, technically you should be switching or crossing over your hands at each throw. So for one throw, your hands will be in this position. For the next throw, your hands will be switched in this position. The exception for this is when um, it's for the first throw. And for the first throw, we'll talk about why it's exception pretty soon. All right? All right, so uh, without further ado, oh, and sorry, the next thing I want to say, don't let go of the string. Um, you know, always keep them in your hand, don't let go, because if you let go, you can grab the wrong string by accident. So always, you know, once you have a string in your hand, keep it there. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with uh, actually going through how to tie a square knot. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is kind of show you uh, something to do, uh, you know, something wrong on purpose. All right. So notice, this is a knot that we want, that we've been talking about, right? But you have this little cross right here. And you're probably wondering, I, I don't think that cross looks right. I don't think it should be there. And you're absolutely right, it shouldn't be there. So if you try to put this down, it's going to be end up you know, not a good knot. It's not very strong. And to solve that problem, what you do is you cross your strings, right? And the string in your left hand should be in front of your body or closer to your body. And the string in your right hand should be a further away from your body. And I've also marked the string with a, a white cord. Um, 
and as well put a piece of paper on my phone to kind of show you which string end goes with which hand. And this is something you can do at home to help you with, um, but it's not something that you have to do, right? Okay, so starting position for tying square knot, it's always this. It's crossed with the string in your left hand closer to your body and the string in your right hand further away from your body. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you do is you take your index finger, and I'm stressing your index finger, not your thumb, and you want to put it underneath the string, like so. Now take the string in your left hand, and you want to make a loop with it, and so you can see the loop right here. That's the loop, right? And so you can just see the strings up here are kind of par parallel to each other. And once you have that loop, uh, connect your thumb with your index finger, and then push your thumb through that loop that you just made. Now take the string in your left hand, put it in between your thumb and your index finger, and then pull it through. And so there you go, a nice little knot, and you just want to push that down, right? And so notice again, my left the left hand is on my left side and my right hand is on my right hand side still. So you didn't cross and the reason you didn't cross before is because remember in your starting position you already crossed the strings. So that's why you don't need to cross on your first throw. Okay? So that's the first throw. Let's talk about the second throw. And this one gets a little bit complicated and it might be a little bit hard to see um, but hopefully we'll be able to um, get that down pretty well. So remember in your first throw, you use your index finger like this. For your second throw, you want to use your thumb. So for one throw, you do your you use your index finger. For the next throw, you use your thumb. For the throw after that, you use your index finger. The one after that, the thumb. So you're always alternating throws with your index finger and thumb. So you want to start this by placing your thumb underneath like this. And I'm going to do an exaggerated motion to kind of show you something. So again, you're making a loop with your thumb and the two pieces of string. And again, you can see it from up there, looks like that. And similar to the first time, connect your finger, index finger and your thumb, and then push your index finger through the loop, and then place the, the string of your left hand between your thumb and index finger, and pull that through. Okay, and so we're left with this. And again, you know, we have that knot that we want um, and that we're looking for. And we have another cross again. And you're probably wondering, well, how do we get rid of that? And the answer is, you cross your hands, right? And then put down the loop. So now notice here, my right hand is on my left side, but my left hand is on my right side. So for my third throw, my hands are crossed. Uh, in positions than my second throw. So we're about to start the third throw and it's pretty much the same thing as um, the first throw. So you take and again notice the square knot and notice how these two are coming out together and these two are going in together. So that's a sign of a good square knot. Alright, All right. so for the third throw again take your index finger Put it underneath the string, loop the string in your left hand over that, and so you're making a loop right here, that's the loop, and up top. Connect your index finger and your thumb, push your thumb through the loop, place the string in your left hand between the thumb and the index finger, and pull that through, and then put that down. Alright, so that's your third throw. And remember, you're doing your third throw with your index finger. So now we're going to do the fourth throw. And this one is going to be done with the thumb because the last one was done with the index finger. So again, same thing. Thumb goes underneath the string. Place the string in your left hand over your thumb from behind to forward so that you're making a loop like this. And notice how they line up like that. And then connect your thumb and index finger push your index finger through the loop, place the string in your left hand between your index finger and your thumb, 
and then pull that through. And again, you have that cross here, so that cross right here. So you have to cross your hands and put the knot down. Right? And so that's how you do a square knot. And you just repeat this over and over again. Or how many or basically how many times your attending tells you to repeat it. And the end result is you're gonna get something that looks like this. It has a particular pattern to it. Um, although it's harder to see with smaller strings, you can see it better with larger strings. But it's gonna look something like that, and just a series of square knots um, made up of uh, two throws each. Okay? So that's the mechanism of how do we do a square knot. Um, but before we go, we're just gonna do something about you know common mistakes that people make. And the two mistakes that people make most often are probably the slip knot um, and the, gr um, the grandma knot. Or the, sorry, the granny knot, it's what we called. Um, and I'm gonna show you how those are made and then you know, why they're bad um, and how to avoid doing those. Okay, so we're going back to we're going back to the second throw. So you already made, you've only made one throw. So I'm just gonna do that for you. I'm gonna make my first throw. And so I'm about to make my second throw now. And so remember for your second throw, you have to use, you're supposed to use your thumb and to go on your string. But what happens if I use my index finger instead? So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you that. So index finger, make a loop, cross over, pull, and rotate. And so at first, you're thinking, hey, that looks like a square knot again. I don't think there's anything wrong. But look a little bit closer. And you'll notice that, so look at this string. It goes underneath this part, but it goes over this part. And the same thing over here. It goes over this part, but it goes underneath that part. And so this is a classic example of what we call a granny knot. And so if we go to um, this picture right here, I can show you more. So with Granny Knot, again, on the right side here, notice that the black screen, it goes r over the red rope here, but under the red rope here. And then from this side, same thing, um, the, brown, the brown rope goes over the red here and then under the red here. So that's a Granny Knot. And a Granny Knot's not as good, basically because it's not as strong as a Square Knot. Remember, the Square Knot, this red rope, it goes over both of these black ropes. And over here, the red rope goes over um, the black rope in both here and here. All right, so that's a granny knot. Um, and a granny knot basically happens when you do the throw with the wrong finger. So instead of your index finger, you use your thumb, or in this case, instead of your thumb, you use your index finger. So the next one I'm gonna talk about is what we call a slip knot. And slip knot happens when you apply uh, a tension of unequal force or like really, really unequal force between your two ends. So I'm going to just accentuate one for you. So I'm going to apply a lot of tension to this rope and then not too much tension to this side. And you can see what happens. Like it's, you know, it's not a very good knot and it doesn't look very good. It's not a very strong knot. And this is what happens when you put too much tension on one rope and then not enough tension on the other side or some combination of the two. And the only way to avoid it really is to um, put the same amount of tension on both, both sides of the rope like this. All right? So you want equal tension when you put the knot down. But you know, again, it's not as easy as it sounds. It's a very hard thing to do. And it, it's something that people take years to do. Um, I, I see residents and sometimes even attending sometimes make slip knots. So it's something that you're gonna have to do by practice and by feel about how much tension to put on the ropes, okay? All right, so that's it for knots and troubleshooting. Um, but we did have one extra thing for all of you. So for those of you who are visual learners or prefer charts to learn, uh, we did put together something that kind of outlines everything that we've did and will help you, uh, you know, organize how to tie strings. Um, and we'll uh, cut to that in one second.